Okay. As we get moving forward here, we have literally exactly two weeks now um, from today before you're released for Christmas break. You get a full two week break this year. Um, that was planned before COVID. So that is not a COVID adjustment, but it was kind of generous. Um, and you got a fall break too, which is kind of a bonus. Way to milk the system, guys. Um, appreciate that. Um, so some of you are feeling a little behind. You've been off uh, computers, you haven't been able to do your work. Meaning you've got to look at your plan a little bit and see what you can do to reduce the amount of work you might have. So here are two options that might work for you. One, if you have a second floor and you just are not sure how you're gonna get that done, as long as you have a bedroom on your main floor, just don't do the top floor. There's no requirement that you have to have multiple floors. That is not the nature of this course. It just courses design a house. The size of the house, 1,200 square feet. That's, that's all that's in there. We're going in larger. If you haven't noticed, we did bigger houses. Um, a 1,200 square foot home is just as much work as a 2,000 square foot home. So if you need to cut a floor, then cut a floor. If your basement is down there and you're going, well, um, all you need in your basement uh, for most of you is a mechanical room where your furnace and your water heater are located. As long as you have that, don't worry about the rest of it. Leave it unfinished. Do one room. Put in the furnace and the water heater and put a door on it and move up to the other things, okay? So there are ways to meet our deadline and get our project done without you having extra stress. And I know for some reason, Generation Z is billed as a high stress group and yet you have more tech and stuff than any other generation before you, but that's okay. Sometimes too much is too much. Okay, so does that help a little bit? So you can either, um, or if you're doing a base, you can convert it really quick to just a crawl space and not even worry about it if you don't need it. Just change the depth of your footings. So those are either, you, some options you have is to just reduce what's going on in your house. Um, maybe not make it quite so large. Maybe you don't have to fill out quite so many areas to think about what's going on, especially on the second floor. For those of you who have that, figuring out where to put rooms can be a lengthy process and just deciding what size rooms to make. So if that helps a few of you, I'm all good for that. It's, it's great um, and everything works good there. So hopefully that'll give you some of you a little bit of a reprieve. We are currently um, working on our detailing, which in my case is on the sheet um, 888 is where we've been working. Nope, wrong. Sorry, A10 is where we're working right now. And this is yesterday's class. This is your class. Um, different walls, same house. Okay. Um, I didn't want to redo the wheel because um, I'm kind of spinning a little bit too. And um, so what I want to talk about here is you're going to do the same thing using those handouts we've given you. And you'll finish out these other sections of your wall section. How much of this do you need me to walk through with you? Um, kind of asking on that to see what you, I know some of you are going, I don't know what the heck you're talking about, man. I haven't been even logged into Zoom for four weeks. Is that you? No. Um, anybody feel like you're just like, have no clue what's going on right now? Uh, the videos are there. I'm trying to put in additional videos to help reinforce what I'm trying to teach. So you have that. How much of this do you want me to work on here? This is what we got, we call feedback. And any, yes. No, I just, no, they, you, there's, I've given you two of each sheet. So for example, you've got two building sections. We'll go back to eight sheet, uh, I know, sorry, sorry, sheet A8. I could put my other section on here just as well and not use sheet A9. So you can't, I just really want to fill your sheets. Um, and that's pretty uncommon. I had no way of ever anticipating how many sheets you're going to need. And so I try and put in a mix of those. Likewise, I gave you two for elevations. Um, and we have to fix those as well. I'm not gonna do those until we get a few more things done. But, um, so there's two of these, you won't, you don't have to use both. 
the idea is if you're looking at like the wall sections, um, I have two here. It just made more sense to put them both on the same sheet and not add another sheet to my list. Uh, so here's B day, here's A day. And they don't even have to be organized where A's first before B, because it doesn't matter. They're actually numbered two and one already. And those refer back to my building section on this sheet. So there's one on A10, it's already referenced. So there's no point in me making more work for myself. Um, that's the nice thing about Revit, is it takes out a lot of that extra work. Now I did, in order to keep them from being confused yesterday, I did put the uh, A day on sheet A9, and they're referencing right here. Just so it wasn't so confusing for them, uh, just so they could see it. Now, if you notice in your section two, your sections allow you, in this case, I'll show what's going on here, to find where bad things happen to good people. Um, one of which is, we just double click in here. This wall uh, goes all the way up to my roof line. That is all one wall from the first floor to second floor. That doesn't exist there. Um, it's, uh, it's what happens when you attach the roof to the walls. Sometimes it grabs the unintentional things. And you just have to go in and tell it, hey, you're not going to the roof anymore. You're a second floor wall. And take and get those brought down again. It sometimes takes a little bit to get them um, to cooperate. Uh, and you fight them a little bit, but it, uh, and that, that wall, is, I've got to work on that. So watch and see where mistakes are. If you see a big mistake, then obviously you can go back into your plans. Well, it should be, it should be obvious, maybe not be, and find out where that wall is at and why the heck it's cutting that room in half. And so uh, just working on some things like that will help you to get things where you want to go, okay? Um, and it may be that you would have to do um, some little crazy like detach and then select the roof. Oh, that fixes it because it's attached to the roof. You can say, hey, I don't want you to be a four foot wall, but if you've attached it to the roof, it's going to go to the roof whether you want it to or not. Um, so just have to kind of look at your settings and say, by gum, that was a mistake. Oh, no, it's not. And just kind of clean it up a little bit, okay? All right, let's go back, back, back here. Okay, so anyway, back on the question. How much, how much more detail do we show? I guess I probably should show you the floor here. Let's just go ahead and do that, might as well. Okay, so we've done uh, the break line. I'm gonna go ahead and put a, two more break lines in while I'm at it. Those again, where do you put our annotate on our components? And the break line is only found in your template. So if you have the wrong template at this point, um, you don't have to go to Revit Studio and find a break line to use, which is where this came from. And I'm just gonna bring this one in here. And while I have it, I'm put another one there. And I just place them. I don't worry about rotating as I place. I'll do the rotating after I place them. You can use your, your space bar as well. Get this thing lined up straight. Can't get a straight line for anything here. Oh, someone's gonna be in trouble. Just flip that around. And then your arrows adjust that block that area on there for you. Now, at this point, I've got, I go from brick to siding. I can't just leave the top of the brick sitting here. Okay, so I did a transition between the two walls. What does the top of a brick look like? Anybody know? It's got three holes in it, right? So um, those are called common bricks. And usually I would we'd be on a field trip by now, but um, oops, guess what? No field trip this year. Okay, so here's a common brick. This one happens to have um, 10 holes in it. Usually uh, for a residential, you'll find three and they'll be right down the middle. This is where rebar goes through to make sure the what one brick falls, they don't all fall. And if you are, um, if you are um, in some foreign countries, most of the brick in like um, South Central America, there is no rebar in it. When they have an earthquake, the whole thing just falls over. Here in Salt Lake, if you're up in the avenues, 
none of that brick has rebar in it. If we have a, an earthquake larger than we had a magma this year, if we get about 5.0, the brick is literally going to take from the size of those buildings and just peel off because there's nothing holding it together. It's just stacked on gravel, which is like saying you put frosting down and, and your gingerbread house is now 40 years old and it's still going to stand up. It's kind of the same kind of concept. Okay? Um, in fact, the houses here in Utah, we have a lot of really nice clay soil and they like that because it can build really fast. In those homes up in the avenues, we call them bungalows, they actually have three layers of brick. There's an inside brick, but then they plastered over to make it look like a wood wall. So if you try and nail up something in those homes, the plaster just falls off because you can't hit plaster with a hammer with any success. So you have an inside brick, then, in be then there's an outside brick, and then when you kiln brick or you bake it, some of those bricks explode because they have either too much moisture or not enough moisture. And as they expand from the heat of the kiln, they just explode. Well, between those two stacks of brick is all the broken brick. And that's the insulation for the house. So if you're in an avenue's house or you happen to have one of those, you might find in the winter, the walls are kind of cold. If there's nowhere to put insulation, it's full of broken brick. Um, and there, that house is still worth $1.5 million. So, you know, it's all about the look with the house a lot of cases. Okay, so yeah, these are kind of the, the bricks. This is what you most of you will be used to seeing here in Utah as the three holes. Okay, so if I have that at the top, that means it's going to just fill with water. Okay, we don't want that. So the first thing I want to do is I'll make a cap piece here. You can go and find a brick cap. You can go into the components and go edit and load. We can go find some masonry. Get my library over here where you guys can see it. And where's masonry going to be found? That's going to be probably under. Detail items and masonry and common brick and <laughs> you go mixture accessories now you gotta find a cap and i i, I usually don't do this way for a couple reasons um, one it's too hard to remember where they all are concrete mixture unit Yeah, and I could spend the next five minutes trying to find the dang thing. So rather than do that, I just make a cap. And I do that because it helps me feel a little more like I'm actually designing something um, and drawing at the same time. So I just use my detail line. It's going to come um, pretty much up underneath your siding here. Sorry there. And so I'm going to start on the outside. The cap is about an inch over from your face of brick. Approximately, it might be a little less. I use exaggerate a little bit more. So I'm just gonna draw a line up and align at an angle. And I'm just gonna take that up through the siding, bring it back down and over. So this becomes my cap piece. Now I do have the siding going through it. I'm just detailing, it's a symbol. I'm not gonna worry about, it's not gonna show my house. I'm not gonna worry about it. But I do wanna put some sizes to it. So I'm gonna measure a few things here with my modify. So I look at the size here from the space of my sheathing out on five and five sixteenths. I'm just gonna make that five five point five inches. So it's a little e easier number. Let's just say it's it's a symbol. I'm not gonna make a lot of things. Some firms will have these all preset and and you'll go ahead and create them. I do want it to overhang a little bit because I want the water to come off, and I do have a slope on there. So the next thing I want to do is look at the size of this front piece. And I'm actually going to put a dimension on it right now, just so it's easier to modify. And three and a half is just about where I want it. The total, so I'm going to put three and a half there, and I will delete this in a minute. Because one, I want the contractor just to purchase the, con the cap. I don't, I don't want to have them make a cap on the job site. That's like something out of a movie, Ten Commandments, where they're stomping in the mud and throwing straw and forming a bridge. I don't want them doing that. I want them to just purchase the cap. So the back side, 
I only want that to be four inches. So that's why I put the dimensions on, so that when I go in and modify this guy, I can pull this guy down and will that just stay connected? How cheesy is that? And I want this to end up being four. So once I get that position there, four inches, that would be my slope, my cap. Um, and that's what I want. Now this one dropped down a little bit too, uh, but I don't want it to be more than four inches tall. And the reason for that is in my brick, from the top of the brick to the bottom of the grout below it is four inches. So I want to stay in that same modular spacing. The front piece here, not super important. And it could be rounded edges, it could be concrete, it could be cast stone, it could be carved stone if you want to pay the money for it. Um, but I just want to make sure it looks like a cap piece. Once I get that in, I'm just going to take the dimensions out. And that gives me now my transition from the brick wall to the siding wall. What goes on the bottom of a wall? What do we call it? No, that's at the bottom of the house. It's up on the wall, but I don't want to put a foundation on my second floor. Yeah, that'd be kind of weird. It'd be maybe an interesting thing to pursue since we need design stuff. What do we call that piece that goes right here? Starts with a S. So plate. Thank you. Yeah, I'm trying to get you ready for testing and everything else. Um, this is going to be a component. Put the wrong buttons there. And you have them all in your course already. It's a two by six. We bring it over, rotate it around, and it sticks right there. Woohoo, that's done. What goes underneath my flooring system? We did it yet the other day. Similar up here. What do we call those? So at the top of the wall, top plates. And we're going to have two of those. So I'm just going to rotate around so I can grab that point. I want to grab onto the, come on, it's over. That point. And, oh my gosh. And that puts that one in place. Woohoo. So now we're, now it's starting to look more like a detail. And for this class, these, this wall section is also a cornice detail, a wall to floor detail, a wall to foundation detail, and a footing detail all in one. So, for residential, that's great. If this is a commercial building, I might have eight different footings uh, because they change size depending on what the type and the weight of the wall is. So in commercial, we often use poured concrete we tilt up or cast in place concrete. Um, those, those walls can weigh thousands of pounds. And that means the footings have to change depending on the height of that wall. So we just have to, we have all our work kind of set for us here. What we need to do now is do our framing. We have our subfloor, which is good. We don't need to show finished floor in a wall section. That is, that is done after the thing's built. They come in, lay the carpet, pour the tile down, uh, put the linoleum, add the flooring. All that happens after the construction is pretty much like 95% done. So this detail won't help them at all. It's already built. But I do have to make sure that this framing takes place. So up against your sheathing, so this wall right here, you have a one inch air gap. That's why the cap has to come over and cover that edge air gap. And um, I, should, I should make you do composite walls. We'll do that another year. Um, so I have my one inch air gap, my sheathing that goes around from my plywood wall. Then inside here, I've got TGIs or floor joists going multiple different directions. So I need to show that I'm not gonna see any endpoints. In fact, I need to wrap the house. So I'm gonna go and put another component in. And this time I'm gonna change my two by six to two by 12. And that is gonna sit, I'm gonna flip that around a little bit so it's a little easier, maybe. That's a sit right on top of Old Smoky. So we got an inch and a half. Something's a little off here. But this, yeah, I'm just gonna place it for right now because something's a little off my floor. Gotta figure out what's going on my floor. This is why we do this, it captures air. 
So lamisinite 38 OSP has a description growth. Okay. So we're up here. Um, something's not quite right down here. My depth's a little off. And um, so I've got to make sure I just that. Yes. You can't see anything in call out one. Okay, hold tight, people. I gotta go find out why he's blind. Okay, I'm back. I should have paused the recording. There's going to be some dead air. Sorry about that. I'm not working for the FCC and I'm not a radio host. <laughs> okay, so um, what I've got is this cavity here is supposed to be 11 and 7 eighths. And if this is 12 inches, that means it's 11 and a half, I should be a little closer to this gap being filled. So what I'm going to do real quick, I'm going to look at my type and the structure and just verify that my numbers are all matching what they're supposed to. Just, just a quick check to make sure I didn't make this a weird number, okay? So when I add those all up, so da, 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 da. Yeah, I should be right, it should be right where I'm okay, we're, we're good there. Um, we're just gonna kind of plug along here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust it with the blocks here. <clears throat> And really what they'll do is they'll um, probably end up putting a TGI out here to close it off. So my next thing now is we've got these TGIs. You can just offset a line and offset it down the thickness of your flanges. So offset down the flange thickness and up the flange thickness. It's hard to see what you mean by that. So rather I use a component again and I'm gonna go in and if we scroll down through, do that to you. I don't know if I gave you that or not. I kind of think I didn't. I don't see what I'm looking for, which is that TGI profile. But it's available to you if you hit your edit type, go into your load, go into your details, detail items. Then go down to wooden plastic, which is division six. 
and we're going to go to shop fabricated structural wood. So that means we build it in a factory or something. And then they go down and find a medium load. Oh, what I'm looking for. I'm looking for wood joist section. So I want to find wood joist section. It's a bit a little exaggerated. It won't be exactly what it looks like in your drawing right now until we open that detail. Then you go find um, your one and three quarter by 11 and seven eighths. Select that. That's what we use in our house. We'll open that up. Hit OK. And this is in place right there. Now that one fits surprisingly exactly like it should. So let's look at what the difference is. Why does this one fit and this one doesn't? If this is 11 and 7 eighths and this is 12 inches, what is going on there? So it's not 12 inches, is it? It's not. Even though the dimension when you click it says it's 12, says so the foot, it's really 11 and a half, which is 3 eighths of an inch shorter than the TGI. Okay. So that's gonna throw you off a little bit. You, so I'm just gonna take this one out because it's gonna confuse you a little bit by doing this way. I'm gonna take this TGI, I'm gonna use my align tool. I'm gonna to go to the back of my, oh, come on. There we go, faces. Nope. Okay, that's just gonna find me. I'm just gonna move it then. And I'm gonna grab the endpoint here and put it here. Now, you're going, well, what's keeping this wall from tipping over? Well, remember, this weight is being spread across on this plywood. So you don't need to put one under each side of the wall. Okay, a lot of students try to put three of them in here to hold the wall up. It's not how these work, okay? You do need to place another one in here, though. So you need to show that there's space, and most of you end up doing 16 inches on center. So I want another one of these eight, 16 inches uh, apart from it. And this is a copy, which is this guy right here. And I copy it from the midpoint. I'm gonna move over um, so it's one foot four or less. It can be less, it can't be more. Place that there. So now I show how these are spaced across and what they look like. So I've got my subfloor, my gypsum board, my TGI, sheathing, Every, all the elements are here now. I need to put in more insulation. That's always fun. More insulation line should be go back to my five and a half. Oh, stop. Five and a half inches going from the midpoint up to there, going from the midpoint down. And I don't carry it all the way through, I just do what I need, mainly because if I start shifting things around, I get insulation showing in weird places. Do I need insulation in the floor? No. If this is my main floor and I have a second floor above it, I do not need insulation here because I'm creating an envelope of insulation around the perimeter of my house. So I've got my ceiling and my walls. As long as I do that on all the sides, I've kept the air inside. The only time you need insulation of floor is if your basement is unfinished. Then you do. So some of you have homes with unfinished basements. You go down there and there's all this wonderful insulation above your head. And you've all been warned that fiberglass will make you itch. Well, it actually just cuts you to pieces is what it does. It's little strands of glass. Literally, it's spun glass. You might know, like spin sugar, make cotton candy. You do the same thing with glass. You get insulation. Really, really hot glass, so not like cotton candy. Okay, so that creates this element. And then we do the same thing down here, TGIs. Mud seal goes here on the concrete. Well, right on the concrete, should I put a mud seal in for you. We'll do one mud seal, because I want, again, my goal today is that you guys need time to work, ask silly questions, not that they're silly. You need to ask questions and know that um, I'm here for you. I'm going to rotate this around, and this mud still sits right on top of the concrete. Just like so. 
Now, my brick is sitting on my concrete. Now, if this was siding, your sheathing needs to be on the outside of the footing. So I just have to shift everything over. But where it's brick, I want the brick to sit on the concrete. So if you have a different connection here, if you're doing siding, I'll come around and help you with that if you're doing siding on that. Also, this floor, I'm showing um, gypsum board there. Um, doesn't need to be there, but um, if it's unfinished, I like to show it there because I want to be as much finished as I can squeeze out with the bank loan on that. Okay, I'm going to come back up here to the top and I'm going to start noting this. And this is where these handouts come. Any questions on adding the components and details? Because you've got this handout, that's what you're trying to do is make it look like this. So you got these, did you want one of these, Well, I did. Okay. So these are in the announcements, they are there for you to print, but it's just a lot easier, especially if you're working on a laptop, to have handouts that you can refer to. And you said you weren't sleeping. Or Eric, yeah, I should wire that seat wire. I think it's a buzzer and then the electric trip to your lane. I got one of those, but um tasers are you can't bring tasers to school. Um no, I would be no. You no, I would never even try to illegally bring a taser. One, they hurt, and stun guns are just as effective. You have to be a little closer. Um, don't lick a stun gun. That would be bad. Okay. Oh, when they're drunk, you know, it's like licking a nine volt battery, but amp up the voltage a little bit. Okay. Okay, so I've got my roof here, and I need to tell the contractor what my slope is. So if you'll go into your um, uh, annotation areas again. There is a slope spot right here under annotations. So I'm going to put the slope of your roof. And it'll be different for most of you. Most of you just, oh, he said do five, I'll do five. If you got different, we want to see it. So I do slope spot. And its default is an arrow. And that looks like that, which is very, very, very European. Okay. And it, it's fine, but um, traditionally here in the United States, we're going to change the arrow to the triangle, and it's going to look like that. That's what we're most used to seeing here in the U.S. So we're going to go ahead and plop that down there. Yes. Um, you're in the middle. You uh, cancel out and try it again. It doesn't switch over all the time. It might lag. So now I know I've got a slope of 6 and 12. Now. If you were to do this by hand, I'm going to talk about the symbol in just a minute. This symbol is showing a full triangle. This, the full triangle traditionally would be, whoops, not that point, hang on, shown where the elevation is. So let me show you what I mean by that. On a plan like this, right here on this hip, would be where I'd show the triangle. And then on the slope would be an open triangle, meaning that this bottom line, the hypotenuse, would not be drawn. It's just angled down. So traditionally, on a detail, it's just a horizontal and vertical line. And then on the elevation, if it's on the roof itself, you put the hypotenuse. That's kind of slipping away in as far as tradition goes a little bit now. We're just doing the triangle and CAD, maybe because it's a little easier to tell CAD routines to draw a full triangle rather than, to, hey, just draw two legs and stop. Um, computers have a hard time doing that, especially with defined geometry. So you do want to have your slope symbol on here. And then I'm just going to use this text tool and then reproduce most of the text that's on your handouts. And I would have you refer primarily to um, oh, the typical wall section. If you look at the wall section sheet, uh, there's a lot more text there. And I know how much you guys like to write, and your English teachers are killing you with papers, uh, just to have you write papers. So I come in here. Now, when we activate the text, you can choose to put leaders on it. 
as you go. I usually type first and then I change it for the leader second. So I'm just gonna pick a point. It's gonna be a little dot there. And I'm gonna put in my roofing on here. This is gonna be 235 pound asphalt and all again, all caps. Asphalt, oh, did I get that P? Asphalt shingles over five eighths. And this is, it can be, um, CBX is the most common. You might, if you look at the other detail, we spec that a little differently. It could be CBX or um, the other one that's used. Oh, can you let him back in again? Yeah, CBX is only in. So CBX means that this plywood is rated for exterior. Anytime you see an X on plywood, it's exterior grade, meaning um, they, they put in the, the wood is usually more of a cedar or a redwood type. It's got a tighter grain to it, or they'll coat it with a wax coating to seal the grain so it doesn't take in water as much. So it's a type X um, plywood, and you can abbreviate plywood, ply WD will work just fine. Plywood and sheeting. Okay, so I get my text done. Woohoo, looks great. Now, when you do leaders, that's these little arrows that point to what you're looking at. The one here in the lower right is an arc, which kind of matches what's going on with your dimensions when you do leaders on those. You have a straight shot and you have an angle. As what I was taught when I went through architectural school with the firms I've worked with, they really, really, really avoid the straight line. Um, it's just a, because it's kind of your architectural flair, you know, you get a little style. So I'm gonna do an arrow and then go select the object, bring the arrow back up. And then I will always put a tail on your arrow. So it goes to the text you're referring to. And since I got the text, I'm just gonna close it. So I do it a little backwards um, and these would not be attached now. Oh yeah. So if I move the text, the arrow is not attached to it. You can attach them together. Oh my gosh, I put the box on it. I'm getting all kinds of weird emails today. It must be the end of the world. Okay, so if you do it the other way, let's do another note. I'm gonna do the fascia here. And that a fascia is, um, oh, it's not really labeled very well. Um, it's um, talks about double started course. This is how I would do my fascia. And I'll do the leader on this one. So it's attached. A point there, bring the line down, bring it over. This is gonna be a two by wood fascia and the abbreviation for wood is wd fascia um paint as per owner because i don't want to be involved in any choices of stuff like that and then i put in apply gutter as oops as required and the reason i put in has required is because that's a code issue. And by putting it there, I make the contractor look up where it's required. It's pretty easy. Most of them know it by heart now. Um, okay, one second, Precious. Um, when you um, put a, when you have a roof overhang that overhangs a door or a garage door, you are required to have gutters there. And then otherwise they're as, you might want to control water flow. So if you have a client that wants to collect all their rainwater, then you would put a system in to do that. But the requirement is if it's overhanging a door, you need to have a gutter there. Now, if you have a gable, you cannot put gutters on gables. Okay, it goes on the slope side of the roof is where the gutters are. So I'm not gonna, that's why I'm not gonna show it here. Uh, it may not apply here. Okay, to get your wall section on your Asian 10 sheet, have you created your call out yet, Thresher, from last time? And so 
Thesher, have you created the call out yet? And Thesher is not even in the class anymore. Okay, thanks. That was our. Okay, I'm not sure why he logged out. Story of my life. Okay, anyway, we'll keep moving forward. Now, once you move on, you do want to call out things like your thrush, your stop it. And again, you, I use. I like these little arrows. You can go in and modify these if you want. Um, so why I don't. So under here, uh, this will just come down and then a little arrow over. And this will be uh, aluminum. And it's just A-L-U-M, soffit, color by owner, um, vent as required. Okay, and that's again, another thing they look up in the code, it's a chart. If you have this much softening, how much of that needs, how what's the percentage that needs to be vented? And then they can just say, okay, maybe it's every four, maybe every six, they need to vent on there. So your notes do not have to be really profound literature actions here. They are simply just there to have the owner know or the contractor know what you're referring to. Um, so I have a little sighting here. If this is a wall, whole wall section, I don't need to label the aluminum siding more than once. Now, again, siding, you have three types. It could be wood siding, it could be aluminum siding, or it could be vinyl siding. You need to make that distinction as you go now. And so I'm gonna go and do this. This will be kind of fun. I'll bring it down. Since I've got aluminum here, I'm just gonna match that up a little bit. And I'm going to do vinyl. And remember, it's also vinyl. Vinyl siding. Color by owner. I think I spelled vinyl wrong. I'm pretty sure I did. V. There's an I in there somewhere. Vinyl. There it is. Vinyl siding, but and I just do that now. That also occurs down in this part of the detail. So I'm going to go ahead and click off of that, and now I'm going to go up here while it's selected, and you can um, change your justification. I want to add a leader is what I want to do, and I'm not seeing my option there. So let's, we'll just do it. We'll just do another leader. And I'm just gonna come down here and just bring that up to there. And click carefully. So you can put a second leader on with a one note goes to multiple things. Okay. We call out your insulation in both places. Um, keep in mind that on the roof, you need to use the insulation values. Uh, from the wall section. So in our roof, we need to have uh, up there, an, what it? it's a R42 now for your roof insulation. And so I'm gonna do another text leader right here. And it's R42 roof insulation. And that's all I'm going to put. I don't. You don't need to go in and say, make sure it's by this company and by this. I believe it's kind of vague a little bit, uh, at least for right now, because you haven't gone through and, and done a specification and, and details like that. You will get as you work in your in your industry as you get work on these. You'll get companies you like the product more than others. Then you would include them on your drawings, and that would be what the contractor has to use. If you write it down on the drawing, it's a contract. And so I try and keep it a little open that they meet the requirements, like the rubric on an essay, but I give them some leeway to find a better price. If I start telling them who to buy from, then all of a sudden um, my prices go up and up and up because those companies eventually know, hey, if you got another project, it's gouge them because they don't have another choice. 
leave choice in who you buy from and make that kind of happen for you. Okay, but that's how you add the notes to your plan and get those off the back in place. Does that help? Is that good? Okay, so that's what the handouts are for. What can I help you guys with that are getting back that you need to see again or uh, miss or that you're stuck with? I know we had one question on showers. Is that still here? Some of the question was shower. That's a weird question. Um, maybe it was maybe. Okay. Um, we're gonna, you then do, you don't have to do two. You're doing one wall detail, putting the notes on it, labeling the parts, showing the detailing, using the handouts that you've been given to make that work. Um, again, you only, if you do an unfinished basement, there'll be insulation in the floor. If it's a finished basement, there's not. If you have a crawl space, there is. So you're creating an envelope around your house to keep um, everything clean and, and set. Okay, let's go questions for a few minutes. Uh, how about we'll start with online? Emma, do you or Talia have any questions? No. No? Oh, okay. Okay. This is the longest teaching year ever. I think I've said more words this year than I have in the last 30. Yeah. If I don't have a second floor, do I have to put the soffit on the wall section? So if you don't have a what? A second floor? Yeah. You have a roof, don't you? Yeah. So the soffit goes underneath the roof overhang. I mean that two by 12 piece. Oh, the rim just right here? Oh, yeah. It would happen right here between your floor and your foundation. So okay. this happens in both places. Okay, thanks. So, yeah, you, the difference is, is uh, where my floor, or the second floor comes in the wall, there won't be a double top plate here. You'll have a mud seal underneath your flooring materials, and then, but you'll still have the TGIs. Does that make sense? And I'll still have a sole plate here. I think it just got confusing, didn't it? Let's see. So I will still have this point here. And I'll just do one of those on that. And then you'll still have your uh, CGI. I'm going to find where that one. And it's always good to know where these go. So Joyce right here will come in and we'll sit right in there. And it doesn't have to be exactly flush, but it kind of helps. And just make sure I don't go more than one foot four apart. And then that would finish the bottom out. And then here, I would put insulation in. And that's going to be 11.875 inches. And I'll just run that through. And that would, that's how that would look at the bottom. There. So, and then we got the details that go into the concrete, your anchor bolts and, and those kind of things. Okay. And again, most of those are in your detailed items. All right, um, questions from the classroom. What do you have, are you stuck on? What do you need to see again? Um, yes. In my roof? Absolutely. Do you know, have you ever been outside with a bald head? So yeah, so it's a problem. So your hair, I mean, I didn't know if you've ever shaved your head. Okay, shave your head this summer, see what happens. Um, your hair on your head is what insulates your head. When you lose that hair, your top of your head's colder um, because there's a very little thin layer of fat and tissue between your skull and the surface of your skin. And so the hair is kind of important that we have that evolutionary wise. If you leave insulation out of a roof, then everything you've heated up goes up through the roof. So all your heat leaves your building. And you'll hear, that's why when you're maybe around kids, most of put your hat on, you go outside. Just trying to keep you warm in the cold. That's the point behind hats. 
terror, that kind of thing. Um, so that, yeah, you have to just let you, it's required. But, but good question, but yeah. Uh, next one, Let's see how many we can go here. That many, huh? I must, yes. Make a leader line. Okay, it's in your text. And if you're just, it's all part of the text here. You can also get to an annotation. There is a leader line. Where is it at? Maybe I gotta get out of my text first. Hang on, get out of my text. And if you go into annotation, there is your keynotes here. And you can get down to use those for leader lines. There's also, Oh, it's probably the easiest to do text. So if you do your text, hit your which one you like. So if you do this one, the one straight out to the left will always be a straight line. There's an arc one, and I'll put it here. And they can bend and twist and do all kinds of fun stuff with that one. And then you type your text. Um, if you don't have text, you just hit the little close X at the top, and that's just an arrow sticking out there for nothing. That to look good. And they can be modified. You can change it if you don't like it. You can reposition them. Does that help? Yeah. Okay. Okay, wow, this is uh, going a little faster than I was planning, but that's okay. This gives you about an hour and 25 minutes of lab time. So hopefully that'll be beneficial for you. Um, I'll let you kind of do that. Um, let me show you um, where I'm at with a new project, or what a project, I think I've shown you this before, but if I'm boring you, I'm sorry. And I'm gonna pause this.